feel like we've got a, a car here that really represents uh, Corvette and represents America. Personally, I've got a real uh, appreciation of the Corvette. I grew up, uh, my dad on the beach, we had uh, uh, Mr. Duntov and they had uh, did some early runs, speed runs with the early Corvettes. Got a picture of myself and, and uh, with one of the 56 Corvettes they had down here at the uh, speed trials on the beach before this place was ever built. And uh, Betty Skelton was part of the show. She just passed away this year, but she was part of Chevy's PR team. And she had been a, uh, an aviator. She was one of the uh, top women pilots of that era. And uh, so I was exposed to Corvettes at an early age, at their early age, and at my early age. <laughs> My dad was uh, best known for, the, for our NASCAR stock car product, but he was uh, very big into sports car and road racing. He, uh, he and Curtis Turner ran, the, he was kind of the captain of the official NASH team in the Mexican road race, the very first one in 1950. And we had a lot of NASCAR drivers that were midnight road racers at the time delivering whiskey on the back roads. So. There's, there's a, there is a NASCAR heritage to road racing, and uh, the uh, thing I think he would he would really be proud of. He's very close with the GM people to start with. Had a lot of friendships there, uh, and I think he would he, and he really liked the international aspect of this event. He was close to the Mr. Ferrari and a lot of different people that are involved in, in road racing. to Detroit for a meeting. We were in uh, Mark Royce's office, Brian France and Mike Helton and myself. We met with Jim Campbell and Mark. I happened to carry with me and drug out an old picture of the uh, GTP Corvette that ran, uh, Rick Hendrick ran. I said, it'd be nice to have a Corvette running for an overall win at Daytona again. Mark's a car guy like I am. He was, he's real familiar with, with uh, the history of that car. And so uh, he took a look at it and thought about it a little bit. There are uh, leaders and followers. And after when I sat down with Mark Royce in that meeting, I came out of there, I said, that's, we got a leader here. And uh, that's, that's, that's what he is. He makes decisions and, and uh, leads the way. And he, the one question that he asked that told me that was he said, would we be the first? And I said, yes, you would. And they are. I came out of that uh, meeting. I sent his dad, Lloyd, a little note. I said, you got a, your son's a leader. And that, that one question just framed that for me of, of how he approaches things. Jim Campbell was the one that uh, took the plan, put the team together uh, to get the job done. So, so uh, he got Mark Kent and his team, uh, got Pratt and Miller, put the whole team together. Grand Am worked very closely with the team that was designing and building the car. They, they were in the process of putting the, the rules together. They were very close with Pratt and Miller on all the structural, the roll cages and everything to make sure that the integrity was in place on the, on the cars. Uh, it was a, a, a process where Dave Spitzer and the team, they went back and forth to Detroit uh, to burn up the wires with the, with the uh, data and the email going back and forth. The goal was to be able to create a prototype platform that the OEM could work in, a box that they could work in, that allowed them to put their styling cues 
in and not just be an arrow, go fast exercise. We want the cars to go fast, but we really wanted to design a prototype that would be identifiable with, a, with an OEM brand. Uh, we got it done in, in uh, about eight months, and, uh, which is kind of unheard of on, on putting together a new race car. Prettiest uh, prototype that we've ever had, Daytona prototype. When Jim Campbell introduced the car down here, we brought it in and started testing the next day. We had several NASCAR teams that were running uh, while we had the introduction, uh, which was in the Daytona Club right inside the track. So Dale Jr. came over for the actual unveiling and introduction of the car. He and Mike Helton were leaving. I walked out with him real quick to get his impression. I said, well, what did you think? He said, well, if I could buy it and drive it home, I'd buy it right now. He said, he said if I could drive it home, I'd buy it right now. I think the Corvette fans will actually, this will be a car that they can really uh, sink their teeth into. So this is another big chapter in Corvette history that's just opening right now. And I don't know how, the, how this chapter's going to finish. We've got a bunch of guys out here that are getting ready to try and write some of that story. Wayne Taylor's SunTrust team, Bob Stallings with the Gainesco team, the Action Express uh, two-car team, and uh, Troy Fliss with, with the Spirit of Daytona. Corvette is the American sports car. Now, any Corvette fan or Corvette person, Corvette owner, anybody's ever had one in the past, but it's thinking about buying one. Uh, this will help really be an important vehicle to them.